Hello, everybody. Good morning. And today, I'm going to present my science project called The Building Blocks of Life. <clears throat> Have you ever wondered why your hair color is black or brown? Or why you look like your parents? These questions can all be answered by understanding the building blocks of life. In this project, I will show you what the building blocks of life are and what they do. My project will answer the following question. What are the building blocks of life? How do they work? And what are their applications? To answer this question, I have done this procedure. First, identify the building blocks of life, such as DNA, genes, or proteins. Second, look up the definition of each term and figure out how they function. Third, categorize, define each term, and understand the role they play in helping our bodies function and grow. Fourth, research on the medical, archaeological, forensic, and agricultural applications for the building blocks of life. Finally, summarize and conclude about the building blocks of life and their applications to the modern world. <clears throat> Let's talk about cells. Cells are the building blocks of life. They are the basic matter in all organisms. In our bodies, there are about 100 trillion cells. One trillion has 12 zeros and would take a lifetime just to count to one trillion. Of these 100 trillion cells, there are 200 cell types, such as nerve cells, brain cells, skin cells, or blood cells. <clears throat> Here's an interesting fact. In our hand, there are about 2.5 billion cells. If each cell was the size of a grain of sand, then our hand would be this, as big as a school bus. You've often heard of the term DNA. So what does DNA stand for? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, as one of the two types of nucleic acids found in our bodies. DNA is shaped in a twisted ladder, or a double helix. The strands are, are DNA backbones and are made up of sugar and phosphate. The rungs are actually nucleotide bases, initialized as A, T, C, and G. <clears throat> A pairs up with T, and C pairs up with G. The pairs are linked together by hydrogen bonds. What about genes? Genes are a segment of DNA. There are about 24,000 to 25,000 genes in our bodies. Below are what makes up genes. The letters are nucleotide bases. Three nucleotide bases form a codon, as seen here. A group of codons forms a gene. <clears throat> and a gene helps and a gene is the instructions for making proteins. These proteins help our body function and create our traits. <clears throat> Let me give you an analogy. A, T, C, and G, the nucleotide bases, are a four-letter alphabet. A, T, C, and G are letters. Three letters create a word or a codon and a group of words form a sentence or a gene. Also, a genome is an organism's complete set of DNA. So far, we have talked about cells, DNA, and genes. What about proteins? Proteins are organic compounds essential to live. Organic compounds are one that contains carbon. 
Proteins are made up of a string of amino acids. Here is a diagram of a particular amino acid. Let's talk about chromosomes. Chromosomes are tightly packed proteins with DNA wrapped around it. Humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 chromosomes are passed down to us by each of our parents, making us look like them. <clears throat> Did you know that a mosquito has six chromosomes, whereas a tarp has 104? This shows that the number of chromosomes has no correlation to how advanced or complex a species is. As you know, there are approximately 7 billion people living on Earth today. Of these 7 billion individuals, are we alike? or are we unique? The answers to both of these questions are yes. Why? All humans share 99.9 percent .9 identical DNA. We differ by the traits that we inherit by our parents. There are three different types of traits. Physical traits such as skin, eye, or hair color. Behavioral traits such as how we act or react to a certain circumstance, and predisposition to a medical condition, which is a certain type of disease, sickness, or medical condition that can be passed down from your parents or ancestors. <clears throat> now, you may ask, what is the point of learning all this? The point is that there are many benefits to understanding the building blocks of life such as curing and preventing diseases, conducting forensic investigations, identifying archaeological finds, and genetically modifying plants or animals to suit agricultural needs. The applications are endless. <clears throat> In conclusion, the basic building blocks of life are cells and its components, such as DNA, genes, and proteins. These building blocks of life help our body function, pass on traits from parents to children, and make us who we are. Learning about the building blocks of life had great potential for curing and preventing diseases, serving justice, understanding our evolution, and enriching our lives. Thank you for listening.